This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or an online store, make it with Squarespace. For this project, I thought I'd update my underwater filming rig, which is just basically a GoPro on a stick. This is an entry level GoPro. It's the Hero Session, I think it's four, and it cost about 160 pounds. And for that price, the quality's really been pretty unbelievable. <laughs> It comes as standard with this little cage, which you can use to attach to various other adapters. I've got under here a couple of things that I've bought separate. This is a swivel head, which is indexed and kind of stops at various angles. Underneath that, there's a pole grip, which I can use to tilt backwards and forwards. The rest of the thing is it is just a landing net pole and it's a horribly cheap one at that to be honest. I've never actually used this for landing fish, it's just really a bit flimsy and some of the ferrules have come off it. But it does extend to about 3 metres which is long enough for me to stand at the bank and push a pole into the water or from the boat. The one drawback of having a camera like this on the end of a stick is you can really only guess what you're filming. It does actually connect to a mobile phone via Wi-Fi, but once underwater, that signal gets broken up and scattered by the actual water itself and becomes pretty useless. So I've been experimenting with using some TV aerial cable to link the two together. I've got some of that cable here, but it's quite kind of thick and not really flexible. And that's because it's got some sheathing inside to stop the Wi-Fi signal kind of leaking out. This is about four meters of external quality cable with both ends stripped off to expose the copper about eight centimeters on each. These are basically aerials. A few days ago when I was first experimenting with this, I simply taped one end to the back of my mobile phone with some gaffer tape and the other end I pushed through the frame on the GoPro and kind of wrapped it round as best I could. And that really worked for a while. The trouble is after a couple of goes of taking the GoPro out and reattaching the wire, I managed to actually snap a bit of the frame. So I'm gonna try and make a little bracket to hold that aerial to the camera a bit better and hopefully not damage the frame. I've got a bit of plastic here. This is polymorph, which you can get from hobby shops or online. It comes in various colors and softens in hot water easily enough to mold into different shapes. Once it's cool, it kind of stiffens up to feel like the kind of nylon that you find in kitchen chopping boards. Before I get the jug kettle out, I'm going to put a bit of gaffer tape around the camera and cage just to make sure I don't get the plastic stuck in any nooks and crannies. I'm going to bend the wire just to get it to fit around the frame as tightly as possible. Then we can cook up some plastic. Yeah, that's not pretty. I think I'm gonna leave that a couple of minutes for it to cool and firm up. I think that's possibly the ugliest thing I've ever made. I'm gonna peel that tape off the camera and then give it a test fit. Surprisingly, that's not actually a bad fit. I'm going to use some cable ties on the pole to stop that wire flapping about. So 
So we're basically on the home straight. For the mobile, I want to attach that at the other end of the pole, the bit that's not going to go in the water, hopefully. And I've got some bits and bobs that I've kind of collected from my photography gear. This is a camera crab claw clamp. Try saying that when you've had a bit of a drink. And it's basically for attaching bits of photography equipment to tripods on other poles. And this just screws in to give me a quarter camera thread actually sticking out of the clamp. To hold the phone, I've got this little Frankenstein device that I whipped up. On the bottom here is just a standard mini ball head. The bracket, again, I made from Polymorph, and I made this originally, actually, when I was testing it a few days ago. Basically the same method, heat up some white Polymorph, and then shape it around a mobile phone that I'd wrapped in some sandwich wrap to protect it. And I've got this attached into something I stole off a tripod, which has got a quarter thread in there. So that's just screwed in. This little crease down the back is actually for the wire to fit into, and this can basically just screw on. I'm just gonna run through the Wi-Fi connection here, although there's no water, it works the same in or out of the wet stuff, to be honest. I'm gonna start by just pressing the little button on the back of my camera. And then if I keep pressing that, I can cycle through the menu to the Wi-Fi and press the red button on top. That's the Wi-Fi on. Then on the phone, I can go into the GoPro app, which you can download for free. And then I need to find the camera. Now I've already paired these two items together because I've used them before, which only takes a minute. And the app will kind of walk you through it, especially for somebody like a Luddite like me, it makes it kind of very easy. So my camera already has a name, it's called Little Man. You can see it there. It's already connected via Wi-Fi. that's that little blue. And if I press the camera controls, I can get a preview. And that's it, there's not really magic to it at all. I was out this weekend testing it. And to be honest, having that mobile phone view of what was going on underwater really made an absolute unbelievable difference. To set this up on the bank as a static rig, I just used a couple of bank sticks. The small one at the front has a rubber gripping rod rest and the one at the rear is adjustable and I put a wider rod rest on there so I could hook the back of the pole underneath and just adjust that up and down to find my depth in the water. I was actually at a small feeder stream to a local lake in the park and I took with me just a standard nine foot spinning rod and reel and a selection of layers. The water here is kind of clear, it's not gin clear, but it's good enough to film in. To get shots, I mean, there isn't really any formula. I did a lot of random casts in all kinds of directions, kind of bringing the layers across the front of the camera from various different positions stopping and pausing and going through my normal fishing routine and even though i could see what was going on and i was getting that live stream view this still takes a lot of chucking layers about to really get great footage it just makes it a little easier the one thing about that nine foot rod having that extra length really gave me control around the front of the camera which was obviously out a bit away from the bank I also set the camera up at some different angles, actually laying it on the stream bed and filming upwards as I passed layers across the top, or kind of did bombing landing shots in with surface water layers. To get some more active camera shots, I taped on a couple of bits of pool noodle to the end of the pole and used the extended rod with a bit of line out to pull the layer along as I swung the whole thing around. I'm not sure the pool noodles actually did anything in the end, but the technique seemed to work and I could use the mobile phone to keep the layer in shot. There are a couple of drawbacks to using the camera with the phone. The first of all is you can only get a preview at 30 frames per second. If you want to use 60, there's no preview available and 60 is something really great to use if you want to get slow motion shots. To work around this, I was setting up shots at 30 frames per second, and then while the camera was still in position, changing it to 60 on the phone, but obviously I was flying blind. There is also a bit of a lag between the camera and the phone, but it only takes a few minutes really just to get used to that and adjust yourself. I'm gonna take this to work with me tomorrow and go and try it out in the docks where maybe there's a bit more depth of water, just to check that change in the aerial's not changed anything. 
Thanks for watching and thanks to Mike from work who actually suggested this hack. If you've got your own improvements or comments to make, please leave them below. It might help me or it might help one of the other viewers who's facing this similar problem. I really want to make another video about using this rig and maybe more of the mechanics of actually filming underwater. I think it's one of those kind of fascinating places that I very rarely go. And I think with a few improvements to this, I could really open up some areas of kind of exploration for myself. But my regular viewers will know I've got a fishing rod to finish the second part of a project that I'm working on at the moment and I should be back with that shortly. I'm in the process of building my own website at the moment for the handmade fisherman and of course I'm using Squarespace who kindly sponsored this video. Squarespace is really easy to use and it's almost self-explanatory. Squarespace offer a huge range of well-designed templates that you can bring things like your own images and video into. It's also all singing and dancing so there's no installing things or patching things in or even updating, it's all done for you. It's easy to search for and register your own domains for your site and also transfer them if you've already got a domain. There is support available 24 seven if you need to get yourself out of a jam. So if you need a website, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash handmade fisherman to save 10% on your first purchase. I'll post a link in the video description below.